Hello and let's talk about the ongoing farmers' protests in the country. Now the protests have been going on since November 26th and despite the government's attempts to somehow either divide the protesters or placate them in some way or the other, the farmers are very determined that they will not retreat until their demands are met. And the demands are very simple, the withdrawal of the three farm laws. Now the government has had multiple negotiations with the farmers. On the 8th, of course, we saw Amit Shah himself calling the farmers' leaders and a negotiation taking place which ended without any conclusion. The government's final offer, it seems, is a written assurance that MSP will be given. And now the farmers are not really happy with it because their demands are more all-encompassing, they're more, more wide-ranging. And we have with us Viju Krishna, the All India Kisan Sabha, to talk about not only some of these demands, but also the kind of spirit of unity that we are seeing on the ground, the kind of mobilizations that are taking place, and the important question, which is why is the right wing so scared of farmers' protests? I also wanted to ask you about uh, how you, the sense of the mood on the ground, you visited the protests, of course, and this is actually a very unprecedented protest in the sense of hundreds of thousands of farmers, of course, gathering. People have compared it to the great protests many decades ago. Of course, we also know that over the past few years, the anger by farmers has been building up. The AI case especially has mobilized across the country. So how, what is your sense of the kind of mood on the ground of the farmers? See, I have been involved with uh, student activism and then with the Kisan Sabha now almost for 25 years. I have not seen this kind of a movement and the solidarity that is being generated around that movement. Uh, the uh, cross-class alliances, the kind of um, varied number of uh, different uh, organizations coming together. Uh, firstly, the different farmer organizations under the All India Kisan Sangharsh Coordination Committee, the Punjab organizations, and uh, uh, also the trade unions and different mass organizations, civil society groups coming out in support of the farmers. This is something I have never seen before. And if you see the uh, uh, farmers from Punjab and Haryana who are mainly at the two uh, Tikri and um, Singhu borders, also those at the Ghazipur border, they have all, they know it is a long haul. It is not something, uh, they know that this uh, government is um, bent on pushing the corporate interest, but they are also prepared to go uh, uh, till the, uh, take the fight to the finish. You, we have seen how you know, people have come well prepared for a longer stay here. And uh, in all states, even other, the government has been trying to portray it as a uh, Punjab specific struggle. But you see the Bharat Band, the kind of response it has got across. That is something, and mm -hmm. consistently from June, first week onwards, we have been consistently on the move, our uh, different organizations. And it is uh, not just uh, I, uh, All India Kisan Sabha, many smaller organizations all coming out. M the effigies of Narendra Modi, Adani and Ambani on 5th were burnt in thousands of places. This is the, the anger of the masses coming, uh, which we are seeing, witnessing in this movement. And in coming days, certain other actions have been called for. On 12th, there is a massive protest uh, that is called 14th again. And uh, uh, to, uh, uh, for instance, uh, at toll gates against Reliance, Adani, uh, 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 different uh, establishments, we are going to have this protest. So very clearly against corporate loot and against a government which facilitates corporate loot, we are all uniting. And it is not just the farmers because the consumers are also going to be affected. And in, in the lockdown period, all sections have lost their incomes, their big loss of incomes, unemployment and hunger and uh, poverty. So all these sections understand what is going to happen with these acts. There would be price rise, there would be um, dis a disposition of farmers, agriculture workers would lose their uh, opportunities uh, of employment. So uh, that is why there is a greater uh, coordination greater unity that has emerged and uh, uh, in a synchronized manner, a large number of organizations of the working class, of the uh, farmers, agriculture, labor, uh, Dalit, Adivasi organizations, women, youth, students, all coming together in this protest. This is like um, never before. We have not seen any such protest before. Absolutely. And we do in this context, the right wing is, uh really taken aback by this as well. 
And we've of course seen over the past couple of weeks, the kind of propaganda models that they use first. There was of course Khalistan. Like you said, there's this whole thing about this being only Punjab centric. There's this thing about it being only a rich farmer led movement. And of course you also experienced this yesterday when you went to address a student uh, body at IIT Madras. And there were a lot of trolls who came into this meeting, indulged in a lot of disruption, were determined to prevent you from speaking. So at this point, why do you think the right wing is uh, right now so scared across India? See, very clearly, uh, when you look at the earlier struggles, which have happened around the CA or uh, on the, the different such issues, the government tried to divide the uh, people along communal lines. It was suppressed in different manners. You, we have seen the campaign around uh, urban Naxals or Pakistani agents and uh, so on. Here they made that effort in the name of uh, saying they are Khalistanis, some of them uh, also claiming it is the communists uh, are behind uh, this and so on. But uh, despite all these campaigns, people are not ready to accept that. And uh, the unity has remained. It is uh, uh, through the talks that unity has remained with the main organizations which are behind this struggle. They have retained that unity. The government is repeatedly trying to uh, break the unity in different uh, ways that has not so far succeeded. And uh, uh, they have lost the debate very mm -hmm. clearly. If they are uh, sure that they are uh, on a uh, strong wicket, they should have initially consulted with the organizations, with the state governments. If it is in favor of the farmers, if they could have convinced there was enough time for uh, consultations and all. The meeting yesterday in, uh, by Ambedkar Periyar uh, study circle in IIT Madras, it was an open meeting. There was enough scope for people to come at the end and ask questions or debate or uh, uh, totally debunk my arguments. But what they resorted to is ex um, uh, abusing language, loud ruckus, and then also uh, putting up uh, uh, pornographic material there. And this is the uh, level to which they are stooping that only uh, exposes that it is coming from the top, the language used by Amit Shah and uh, the prime minister uh, calling someone Khalistanis or uh, anti-nationals, uh, Pakistani agents and a different thing. You, uh, and the, a section of the Godi media, the corporate media is also uh, towing the same mm -hmm. line. That their bucks are carrying on the same uh, the level of discussion that uh, they are engaging in or the narrative that they are trying to set is so uh, uh, that is the manner in which they are uh, willing to take it. But they are really rattled by these struggles. Clearly. These struggles have rattled them. And the fact that the working class, the large section of the uh, uh, people who would actually experience price rise in co uh, coming days, they are uh, standing behind the farming uh, uh, community, behind agriculture workers and farmers. And that is also uh, act, uh, uh, rattling uh, the Sangh Parivar and the BJP RSS. So uh, we are seeing a response in this manner. Absolutely. They are unable to uh, point by point rebut any of the, the simple farmer of our country is able to counter them on each and everything. They are asking questions. If farmer is getting only 30 or 40 rupees for Arhar Dal, uh, for, who's, uh, for which the minimum support price is more than uh, uh, 60 rupees. And why is Adani selling Arhar Dal at 220, uh, that is, a, uh, or with a huge profit? Uh, why is consumer having to pay? These questions are being asked by every person in India now. So that is something their troll armies or their um, uh, the IT uh, team uh, is unable to answer. Um, uh, they have failed miserably. Even the uh, Godi media has not been able to because the, the uh, solidarity with the farmers is something which uh, people realize that even in a lockdown, the farmers have uh, under a th threat of pandemic have produced it is their toil and investment that leads to a situation where uh, people of our country need not go hungry to bed. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Vijay, for talking to us. In our next segment, we go to COVID-19 once again, where there are more possibilities of a vaccine coming out soon. And the big question now is, how will the vaccine be distributed? Who in which country is going to get it first? 
how long will people have to wait before they get the vaccines? What are the advantages the rich are going to have vis-a-vis -vis the poor? Newsclick's Premier Purkayasta and Dr. Satyajit Rath discuss some of these issues. How do we read Bharat Biotech's application? Serum Institute's application at least is backed by some preliminary figures. How do you take Bharat Biotech's application for emergency usage? So uh, this, is, this is beginning to be interesting and it's beginning to be interesting uh, as, a, uh, as an emerging scenario that complicates the landscape between public health considerations on the one hand and capitalist um, money making on the other hand. Keep in, let's all keep in mind that what licensing we are currently discussing is not regular, ordinary, straightforward licensing. It's emergency use authorization. And we've, we've pointed this out repeatedly. Now, as soon as one emergency use authorization was provided by the UK regulatory authority to the BioNTech Pfizer, let us call it vaccine, what companies have begun to do is push the envelope. So currently in India, we have three different categories, as far as I can see, of companies applying for emergency use authorization. One is the straightforward mimic of the BioNTech Pfizer in UK, which means that you have preliminary evidence of efficacy from a phase three clinical trial. And in the country in which you've done this, you're applying for an emergency use authorization. Um, here is the point. The Serum Institute Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine application in India comes closest to this. At the moment, there are no phase three trial based efficacy data in India that I'm aware of. But at least the um, uh, Serum Institute of India, Oxford AstraZeneca candidate and application is based on efficacy data outside and phase one, phase two immunogenicity and safety data inside India. So that's one push of the envelope. And they have the phase three trials going they on. They have ongoing phase three trials, but they do not have, those are not uh, the, even the preliminary data that are, appear to be included in the application. And if that's correct, then this is, as I'm pointing out, one way of pushing the envelope further. A second push of the envelope comes from the BioNTech Pfizer vaccine, which Pfizer has applied to the Indian regulatory authority for permission to import and distribute as emergency use authorization. Now, remember, this is not simply there are no preliminary phase three trial data in India, there are no phase one, phase two data in India either. Okay. So that's a yet different push of the envelope. And a third kind of push of the envelope is the Bharat Biotech reported uh, um, plan or application, I'm not quite sure which, that has that's a vaccine candidate that has gone through phase one and phase two trials in India. But that has not gone through even preliminary phase three efficacy data in India or anywhere else. So you see what I'm saying that in three very different ways, three different private sector companies are pushing the regulatory envelope of emergency use authorization for vaccination. And you will recollect that a couple of months ago, these are the kinds of scenarios that we had begun to think about when we pointed out that multiple vaccine candidates are likely to start coming at, at the same time, all from private sector sources, beginning to show respectable efficacy. And therefore, every day of profit making will begin to matter. The Bharat Biotech is basically the, the Pune Institute of Virology. That's the ICMR uh, lab that has developed the vaccine. But you know, in this case, it would be rather strange that without any efficacy to be shown in the phase three trials, that you ask for emergency usage. We don't know whether it's useful or not. And 
Well, the problem with vaccines has always been if, for instance, it doesn't work, you also destroy the credibility of vaccines itself. Yes, of course you do. But here's the argument being made. Remember that this is why I keep bringing up the politics of the situation rather than simply the so-called value neutral science. There is no such thing. Um, because here's the argument being implicitly made. If I can get emergency use authorization for widespread, huge distribution, which means huge sales, with an emergency use authorization, that means that a full phase three clinical trial is really not needed. Number two, if a full phase three clinical trial is not needed in even the first country where efficacy is demonstrated, then efficacy trials elsewhere can't be needed because all I have to do is show that the amount of antibody made is comparable between two countries. Then if in my country the same amount of antibody is made, then I can, as in, as in another country where efficacy is demonstrated, then I can say because the antibody levels are similar, efficacy is bound to be similar. That's one more step. If that's said, then I can turn around and say, hey, this is a platform that's immunogenic. So we, we really don't, you know, this is a slow slope of digging away and trying to get your product into the market while the market is hot. You know, Sadhya, so this, why I understand the capitalist ethics or lack of it here. What I'm unable to understand is the regulatory system because India's emergency usage itself is a very weak regulatory uh, structure. It's not really very clearly defined. And it also is true that this is relatively new in the world, that this kind of emer emergency usage really is 2010 onwards. This has been on the anvil, countries have done it and so on. But the risk in vaccines, because vaccines is not what you give to people who are sick, you know, who already therefore you're going to medicate, may need something which is not working, nothing else is working, but you're giving it to people who are actually healthy. Therefore, the bar of safety should be much higher for the vaccine than for any other medicine. And this is not something which seems to be appearing uh, in, on the radar of either the regulatory system right now in India or in the media, because media is completely oblivious, treating all these as very similar cases. So let me, let me make two points in response, one of agreement and one of disagreement. The agreement is, of course, what you're saying is, is, is correct. We haven't as yet seen in the media an extensive and nuanced discussion of these issues at all. And that's a great disservice. But let me record a point of disagreement. And that is, or rather than disagreement, a caveat. And that is that there has been no shortcut so far of safety evaluations for any of these vaccine candidates. The only current shortcut for safety evaluations that we've seen even attempted is the Pfizer application to the Indian regulatory authority to license the BioNTech Pfizer vaccine for India without a safety uh, and uh, immunogenicity trial in India. And there's currently no indication about whether uh, the Indian regulator is going to approve this or not, because that would mean a major step of relaxation even for the Indian regulator. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from India. Until then, keep watching News Click. Thank <laughs> you.